Well, good day, everyone, and welcome to Business Profiles with Business Owner Retirement Planning Canada. I'm Dave Wiedela. Let's just get right into it here. So I'll just highlight the purpose of these presentations is really to showcase unique and interesting businesses or professionals. And we definitely have a unique and interesting one here today uh, across Canada to create business synergies and really get some exposure where needed. And as well, neither myself or my, my company is being compensated in, in any way for uh, this uh, this presentation. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, Second Harvest, and uh, Second Harvest is, is a food rescue, mainly based in the GTA, but it is actually growing in a, no a number of areas across Canada. So we have uh, Pat Jocelyn here today. Welcome to the program today, Pat. Oh, thanks so much, David. Thanks for having me here. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so Pat and I uh, basically got acquainted over the last couple of months, and he started telling me about the um, the operations and how they have charitable status, but a lot of good that they're doing. And uh, so essentially with a lot of the food waste, um, the, uh, Second Harvest and foodrescue.ca have created a great solution that people can get involved in. Again, it says here an easy solution to surplus and short dated food. And uh, I'm gonna just hand it over to Pat to tell you a little bit about himself as well as the program. So whenever you're uh, ready to share the screen, Pat, Oh, and by the way, anyone ha if anyone has a question, feel free just to type it into the Q&A. We'll either get it to it at that point in time, or if it's more appropriate, we'll uh, we'll wait till the end of the presentation. Okay, Pat, just take it away. Right on, all right. So once again, good afternoon, and uh, thank you so much for your time, and I'm excited to share what I know about food waste, food reclamation, and foodrescue.ca. Uh, so as David mentioned, I work for Second Harvest, Canada's largest food rescue not-for-profit organization, and I'm the regional training coordinator for the foodrescue.ca program. Uh, so to start things off, uh, we produce more than enough food to feed everyone on the planet, and yet people are hungry to access to food they need to be healthy. And we know that 13% of Canadians live in a state of low food security, which means that there isn't reliable access to adequate amounts of safe, good, quality, nutritious food. And to be clear, the root cause of food insecurity in Canada is a lack of adequate income, which consistently affects more than 4 million of us at any given time. And at the same time, 58% of all food produced for Canadians is lost or wasted. And that's right, we waste more food than we consume. And what's just as upsetting is what food waste is doing to our planet. So when food waste adds up in landfill, it produces methane gas, which is 25% more potent and traps up to 100 times more heat than carbon dioxide. This is all according to NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies. And annually, Canada generates more than 56.5 billion metric tons of methane gas. So just to put this uh, into perspective, if food waste were a country, it would be the third biggest gas emitter in the world, second only to China and the USA. And that's a terrifying reality. Typically, when we think about climate change, we don't automatically think about food, but there is a very clear and direct link. So then, while both these issues are very complex and often not part of the same conversation, Second Harvest has been aiming to tackle these issues since 1985. And for those of you who are not familiar, Second Harvest is Canada's largest food rescue organization and experts in perishable redistribution, and we are tackling food loss and waste throughout research and recovery. Our dual mission is no waste, no hunger, and our commitment to the planet is both environmental and societal. So what is Second Harvest doing? So what makes us unique is we deal primary in perishable food with a focus on protein, dairy, and produce. As these are categories of food that are harder to access for low-income people and not traditionally donated like non-perishable goods. We, as David mentioned, in the GT area with a fleet of 10 refrigerated trucks, large freezers and cooler storage, food donations are covered, and food businesses are delivered to social service agencies typically within 24 to 48 hours. So Second Harvest is not a food bank, nor are we a poverty reduction organization. We have a very clear mandate to support rescuing, delivering surplus healthy food to ensure an immediate solution to hunger while diverting good healthy food from landfills. There's so much surplus food that Second Harvest has extended its reach and delivers and stages large donations across Canada now. Earlier this year, we were provided with 52 tractor trailers of milk that were shared across the country. We have surplus potatoes coming from PEI, we stop in Quebec, they take half the load, and we fill it with surplus meat that they have, and it heads to Toronto. And these are common occurrences. 
It is important to note that although we are a charity, Second Harvest operates as a business with the same cold chain regulations, food safety requirements, and compliance as you would expect from any major retailer. We take all of these very seriously, and we exist to keep good food at a landfill and redistribute that food to where it is needed. So last year, we rescued over 12 million pounds of food and redistributed that to food to over 370 community food programs. And this year we are on trend to hit 15 million. Our services help nourish people through school programs, senior centers, shelters, community meal programs, food banks, and regional food hubs, among others. In the last year, we were distributing enough recovered food each day to provide 34,000 meals to the community. And we lead the avoidable food waste conversation and promote reduction and recovery wherever possible to benefit us all, environmentally, economically, and socially. So when I talk about food loss and waste, I really want to clarify that we are not talking about this. We're talking about this. So this is Matt. He has a bounty of gorgeous ripe apples. They were not headed for retailer processors. They were headed to landfill. And this is not unique. Municipalities across the province see this all the time. Or this, a student-run cafe at Queen's University that donated over 500 pounds of milk that still had over a week before coming up on Best Buy dates. This particular donation helped over 12 agencies in Kingston. I wanted to point this out to highlight the quality of food that is being provided and to stop the myth around surplus food and that food charities are providing garbage to low-income people. This language needs to change and we're not calling Matt's apples or this milk waste. We're calling it surplus and unsold. Great edible healthy food that could just as easily be on shelf at a local grocery store. So, Beyond rescuing and distributing food to nonprofit organizations, Second Harvest came to realize that measuring and understanding the root cause of food loss and waste is critical in our country. On top of that, Canada's food loss and waste problem has the distinction of being among the worst in the world. We produce 52 million, we produce enough food to feed 52 million people, and Canada's population is nearing 37 million. And yet, over 4 million of us are food insecure. So this part of food waste math doesn't make sense. The Avoidable Crisis of Food Waste Report funded by the Walmart Foundation was the first report of its kind released in January of this year. And Second Harvest, in partnership with Value Chain Management International, researched food loss and waste from a whole of Canadian chain perspective. So from primary producer all the way to consumer. It calculated the total amount of food available for human consumption in Canada. We did this by conducting primary research that identifies where, how, and why waste occurs along the chain. It also identifies the root causes and provides solutions to reduce the percentage of Canadian, sent to land, Canadian food sent to landfill. We presented the full findings in a technical report, but for those of you who don't want to read a 144-page report, we've also put together a roadmap that walks you through this complex and challenging issue. Both can be found on our website at secondharvest.ca. These findings, really brought to light uh, the numbers and that the largest contributors to overall food loss and waste are in the production and processing stages of the supply chain with manufacturing and household following with 13 and 14 percent and with hotels restaurants and institutions showing they are adding nine percent to overall waste and interestingly enough retail is only at four percent so this brings us back to the beginning of the presentation and what is astounding is that in total across canada 58% of all food that is produced is lost or wasted. Throughout the food industry, there will always be waste that can't be helped, and this is what we call unavoidable waste. But what is shocking is the avoidable food that is lost, which could be rescued and eaten. This is where we have the greatest opportunity to make an impact. And that 32% is avoidable food waste. This is the type of food that Second Harvest rescues every day. Great quality, unsold, nutritious food. So each year in Canada, 11.2 million metric tons is unnecessarily wasted. Sorry. Uh, that's enough food uh, to fill a freight train that stretches from Ottawa to past Winnipeg, or enough food to feed every Canadian, rich or poor, to eat for five months. As part of the report, the Avoidable Crisis of Food Waste Report identified barriers that were perceived by the industry for rescuing food. So a few key items that kept popping up were coordination between donor and food rescuer, confusion around best buy dates and when food is safe to donate and liability. 
So Second Harvest saw an opportunity to help address these concerns and help organizations outside of the GTA access surplus food. We understand that not everyone's set up with a fleet of refrigerated trucks to get out there and that, you know, a lot of the time surplus food doesn't come in skids and tons, but in, in mere pounds. So this really what leads us to foodrescue.ca and, and the tool we're here to learn about. So foodrescue.ca, it's a completely free tool that provides any food business a safe and smart solution to donate surplus food to charitable organizations in their area. Foodrescue.ca has the ability to make an impact across the country with the effects felt right by where the donors are, really giving back to the community that supports them. So Food Rescue does the work to coordinate donations between donor and food rescues. One of those things that was identified as an issue with the food business. So how it works is that both food businesses and organizations create their free account by going to foodrescue.ca and clicking on the join now button in the type right hand corner. You fill out a one time registration that asks you for information about where you're located, the kinds of food you want to donate, the availability, if this is a, an opportunity for reoccurring donations, you know you're always going to have surplus on X day of the month or weekly, however it may be. You sign off on the terms and conditions which go over the safe food handling practices we have for both donors and organizations. And it then matches you when you have food to donate. So once you have your account set up, any food business can then log in and post what they have available, be it dairy, meat, vegetables, dried goods, canned goods, they go through the categories, they fill out the approximate weight that's available. They then pick the dates and times that it's available for it to be picked up. And they post these donations. When donations are post, local organizations within the pickup rate that they've described. So organizations have the ability if they want to pick up between zero and five kilometers, five and 10, 10 and 20 to really match them with where they can go. They receive these notifications. If it's a good fit, they claim them. They go to the donor at the times and dates specified and pick up those donations. Once those donations have been picked up, the organization then confirms the amount of food that has been rescued. And then metrics are generated for both donors and agencies, providing them with numbers on meals that have been provided as a result of the donation, the dollar value that has come from the rescued food, as well as the greenhouse gases that have been offset really showing that environmental benefit to also donating surplus food. So it's really simple matchmaking system. To further, if a donor knows they're gonna have donations available on the regular, they can create a recurring donation with a single organization. They fill in the same kind of information with the dates they want to come, be it every Tuesday, every day, the last Monday of the month, and that the organization will just show up and pick up whatever may be available on those dates. They then do confirm in the same order, marking down the actual weights to provide those valuable metrics. There are many other features associated with the foodrescue.ca account. So business and non-for-profits can add as many locations to their account as they'd like. So for example, we have some large organizations such as Starbucks, Loblaws, and the Salvation Army that have one large account with all of their locations underneath it. That way, any food donated or rescued through those accounts all get generated onto the one dashboard, providing results on all food rescued across the whole organization. Likewise, individual locations can also log into their account and just see specific food that's been donated from theirs. So it provides an excellent tool, not just for small independent organizations, but also for large corporations or even potential ownership groups that may own a multitude of franchisees locations. You can also have multiple users assigned. So for example, you are the executive director, executive director of an organization and you have a meal program. You would be the one to fill out the, and sign off on the terms and conditions for the program, but you could add on the, the chef or the volunteer coordinator as a user to receive notifications of donations. Or likewise, you're a business owner or an executive chef. You can add on your sous chefs or even you know, packers at the end of the night that could utilize the program and donate through the system. And as I mentioned, 
the unique greenhouse gas uh, unique greenhouse gas calculator really separates us apart from other programs, as assigning specific values to specific categories of food. So, as we know, food isn't just what shows up in the grocery store. It's all the energy that went into generating the the sprouts. It's all the gas that went into the tractors. It's all the water that got put into the fields. It's the transportation costs, the refrigeration costs, all go into that one pint of strawberries. And when that gets tossed, it's so much more going to waste than just a few berries. So all of this has been calculated into this calculator to provide as most accurate. So greenhouse gases offset by beef are much higher than greenhouse gases set off by, say, produce, right? It's not as um, uh, prepared. Um, likewise, prepared food, the, what goes into cooking it, also goes into these greenhouse gases. So it's a, it's a very valuable tool for you to use to also promote the good you're doing in the community or as an organization to promote uh, the need or the availability of all this food to potentially generate uh, ideas for grant writing. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a real uh, amazing tool to help in so many ways and just the initial connection between donor and, and charitable organization. Um, so food safety and liability. So as mentioned, we take food safety seriously and Second Harvest operates as strictly, if not stricter than any food business. So first and foremost, to address any issues that come up with liability, Provincial legislation in Ontario has been around since 1994 called the Food Donation Act that provides both donor and recipient against all liability associated with food. And all provinces across, including territories, have similar legislation in place to protect those who are donating in good faith. We also provide a multitude of resources that can help any organization come up to code with the, uh, how to, to, to transport items, as safely as possible using simple cooler bags and ice packs. We can transport food just as safely as we could in a reefer unit without having that large expensive truck or not, being, or not needing to accommodate skid levels if we're just talking about a few crates of milk and whatnot. Um, we ensure and vet that all organizations either have formal health inspections or up to par with regulation 493 so that we know any organization that is accepting food through the system is educated on how to handle it and will ensure that it is kept in the same cold chains that any food business does. So we're really going above and beyond to address a lot of these issues and providing these, these resources available. So here's an example of some resources. We have food guides and food transportation guides that have all been done um, in reflection of resources from the CFIA, Canadian Food Inspection Agency, as well as Toronto Public Health. We've also created what I think one of the most amazing resources to come out in this field is the food donation and consumption timetable. This really goes through each category of food, identifying what they are, when they can be donated by, and their consumption date after. So it really gives confidence. And once again, another concern was addressing best buy dates and expiry dates and when food is still safe to donate. So this resource really puts peace of mind in both organization and donor, what and when they can donate food. So oh, Pat, one of my- uh, when, when, uh, Are these available, sorry, are these available on, the, on your website? Yep, everything, all of these resources are available on, on foodrescue.ca. There's a resource okay. tab at the top. So this is all available to the, the general household as well as the large industries. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Now I, I'm gonna uh, actually grab, uh, grab a few of those myself. So we, we occasionally have conversations in this household about expiry dates, so. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah, and so you know, one of my, when we talk about best buy dates and expiry dates, uh, really there's only three things that we would deal with that have ex true expiry dates. That would be baby formula, um, meal replacement, so uh, you know, PediaSure, Ensure, um, those type of bars, and then protein bars and supplements. So you know, your Cliff bars, uh, your different types of uh, enhancement kind of things. Other than that, everything is just a best buy date. So really, my favorite is dairy. Dairy can be donated right up onto the best buy date, but can still be utilized up to two to three weeks past, and if frozen, two to three months. Meat can be frozen 
on the Best Buy date and depending on the cut still be consumed up to a year past. So there are lots of ways that we can work with these perishable goods to ensure that they end up going to people who need it as opposed to producing methane gas and going to waste in landfills. Um, you know, it's just because it's not a traditional means of way of donating and that there is quick overturn that program like foodrescue.ca really makes that immediate connection between items that are available to organizations that can utilize right away. And then to date, we have rescued almost 500,000 meals since we started a year ago, May. That's uh, over a $1 million donated food value, and that's at $2.60 a pound. That's kind of uh, uh, Food Banks Canada overall value of what reclaimed food is. And we've offset uh, 1.6 million kilograms of greenhouse gases from entering our atmosphere. And so this is really just in its first year and really starting to take off across all regions. We started last year in four regions and now in 21 in Ontario. And then the main, uh, the island and lower mainland of Vancouver spreading up through BC. So it's something that's really taking off. Uh, it's hopefully going to be available across the country, you know, as soon as possible. And uh, one of the best things too, and this comes from uh, uh, Champions uh, leading research in food loss and waste, is that for every $1 spent on food loss and waste reduction by a business, the benefit is $14 in return. So we're talking about a 1,300% return in investment. And if I was talking to any businessman, you know, that seems like a smart place to put your, your resources, a smart place to put your food. And, you know, on top of that, it's helping people in need in your community. So, you know, beyond that, really know that connecting nonprofit organizations with Serve Plus Food is not the solution for sustainable food security in Canada or anywhere in the world, but how, until we have adequate policies and systems to ensure basic income and affordable housing, and until industry and government development presentative measures to limit food weight loss and waste across the entire supply chain, there is more than enough food in the world for everyone to be food secure. So I really implore you, you know, if you know a business or you know an organization that potentially could benefit from this anywhere, please let me know, Take a look at the website, you know, let us know how we can help you. Excellent, Pat. Thank you very much. And, and uh, by the way, everyone, uh, Pat's uh, contact information, Pat J at secondharvest.ca, it's right here. Uh, a couple of things that I would, uh, I'm curious as to uh, Pat with regards to where, um, so are you f functioning, what is, what is the percentage of your budget that you're functioning on? Is it, is it, is it primarily, is it 100% donations? Is there government assistance as far as this is concerned? Um, and uh, yeah, just start with that one. There's a, there's a bunch of things that really occurred to me as some questions that, just to clarify. But uh, Yeah, of course. So that. Second Harvest, which uh, built in foodrescue.ca, uh, operates solely on donations from in kind from, you know, your average household up to corporations. Foodrescue.ca specifically has been graciously supported by the Walmart Foundation, which really funded the creation of the website, as well as the uh, 16 regions that we're really branching out into this year. So really testing uh, how Food Rescue can be best implemented across the province, uh, different sized communities and across the country. Uh, the Loblaws Foundation has also been a generous supporter of the other three uh, beta test areas. So that would have been St. Catharines, Niagara, Kingston, and Sudbury for the initial pilot last year and continue to fund the expansion into BC as well as those areas this year. Uh, so those would be our, our largest two donors would be the, the, law, the Walmart Foundation as well as Loblaws. Excellent, excellent. Um, so can you just let me know as far as the GTA, which is the most evolved area uh, right now, um, where does where does most of the food come from? Can you get, can you give me a sense of because I'm thinking of, you know restaurants or individual households or directly from you mentioned I guess the grocery stores or the retail outlets are aren't necessarily as much as other areas. Can you kind of give me a breakdown of where most of the efforts and and where most of the um, uh, the the food ends up coming from? For sure, yeah. So if you want to talk, you know, I would say like 
bulk volume, um, you're probably talking about those reoccurring donations. So partnerships we've made with places like bakeries or, or your grocers um, mm -hmm. that, you know, every day may have 10 to 15 pounds of produce that is able to be picked up on a regular basis by a local organizations so are really, you know, generating those large numbers. And I have to say, uh, no frills has really been a champion of the program and coming on board and really helping their local community really, you know, uh, getting out there and making those connections. And, and what's great about food rescue is, is the connections and the relationships that come out of it, right? You may post a donation, not know about this organization, which turns into a daily reoccurrence. So that's fantastic. Uh, you know, what I really do want to want to stress is that, that while volume is may not be as much, you know, the, the poundage is, is the, amount of rescues that are happening by a lot of small be it caterers or local restaurants that are directly being connected with with those um, organizations down the block which they can walk and pick it up second harvest offline program which is a bulk of, of what they've rescued that 15 million pounds this year uh, you know is from uh, relationships that have been placed for years um, with large producers distribution centers um, but really the bulk of what's happening in food rescue are those you know small based communities really connecting with each other so uh, you know we have everything from uh, hotels that hold events to catering companies to mom and pop restaurants um, you know to small grocers as well that are, are really all contributing to the, the numbers that are coming in and GTA as well across uh, Ontario now. That's great. Excellent. Um, so as far as, far as um, perhaps a, a new community that you're looking to to get into, how would somebody, you know, how would someone get involved? And um, I just want to make sure I'm clarifying as far as the food that comes in, is it being delivered and dropped off to, um, uh, is there a central storage location or is it, are, are, are you a, sort of a go between um, as far as the donation, the donator and the, um, the consumer is concerned. Are you dropping it off where it's going to be consumed, or do you actually have your own storage facility? Or can you kind of tell me how so, in terms of how that works? It's, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, so well, number one, foodrescue.ca is all for businesses. So unfortunately, at this point, because of safe food handling, the homeowner couldn't donate extra from a okay. bar. So really focusing on the businesses. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, uh, it, the way it works is that when, as mentioned, when the donor posts that donation, they specify the day, be it a uh, time range or a specific date and the time that it can be picked up. And then the organization who claims it actually goes and rescues it uh, directly. So it goes directly from the business to the organization. And in this model, it is that organization that is responsible for claiming the food and then and distributing it amongst the community. That being said, there are food transport ag agencies. So Second Harvest is very much that food transport agency. They are, uh, you know, a little different they have those reefer trucks and storage facilities where they can accept and hold items for you know 24 to 72 hours uh, to make sure they can get distributed as as best as possible but there are lots of other models of organizations that use foodrescue.ca that are based on volunteers and they will go and make that pickup and then drop it off at another foodrescue.ca member location organization in their area to receive the food so kind of taking that pressure off the organization to make the physical transport. Um, mm -hmm. But that said, there are lots of uh, organizations who may never have even had food in their mission, like housing organizations that are some of the top rescuers in communities like Kingston. Uh, you know, they had their office inspected, they're able to go and pick up, you know, in some cases, hundreds of pounds of frozen bagels and then package it and distribute it amongst their residents. You know, uh, just because people aren't directly dealing with food security or hunger doesn't mean that in the social services they're not working with people that are experiencing hunger and food insecurity and here's a tool that all of a sudden can really give them access to that and once they see the amount that they could potentially rescue really justify the ability to step out for half an hour to go drive and pick up 20 to 40 pounds of bread or in some cases we've just brought in on some uh, farms that are donating, you know, hundreds of pounds of fresh greens a week that are going into salads and, you know, real nutritious food that's really helping those people in the community. 
That's great. It's amazing how much gets wasted. And, and uh, so what a great job you guys are doing. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Again, Pat J at secondharvest.ca. If anyone, you would either like to get involved somehow, you want to find out a little bit more about the program, have any additional questions, feel free to ask Pat. We'll make sure that we um, are, this is going to be up on social media as well. If anybody wants to replay, feel free. And I just want to say again, Pat, thank you so much for uh, for today. Uh, this was a, definitely an eye opener and uh, I'll make sure that uh, uh, we continue to keep this top of mind. So again, thank you very much. Thanks so much, David. It was my pleasure. All right. You got it. Absolutely. Everyone have yourself a wonderful day. Take care.